particularly the Gestalt theory that's got the nice, some nice ideas in it. It's from the pre-computer era. That's something I like about it. And then I've just made a very sort of quick, almost random selection of representational art. And then a bit more focus on some of the Escher and Bridget Riley. Uh, you can't really talk about things like perception and art in London right now without telling people to get to the British Friday in the National Gallery until sometime in May. Um, then we're going to sort of switch a bit to computer era things and look at some photographs and talk about them. And then we're going to look at what some computational image processing has done with them. And then we get to this idea of optimization uh, being something that ties together these things. And so along the way, I'll try and remember to talk about the aesthetics. You can all sort of jump in. If you don't like the way the talk's going, you can change it. <laughs> right, OK. Um, naive idea of what, what's the scout theory? Well, <laughs> the whole rather than just the parts. So we're all familiar with the phrase the whole is greater than the sum of parts. Well, let's look a bit like it and then um, we're going to rush through some of the things that come up as a way of trying to catalogue uh, uh, what we what we sort of discover as phenomena if you like in, um, in visual perception. And of course, this is before they were doing brain scans and things. So I'm going to make a little list here of these uh, categories or, or phenomena that really come from this sort of early part of the 20th century. So emergence. The idea of emergence is that you look at this one and see. Oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we see. And we, uh, they like this example because once you've seen the dog, you can start to see the ears, the eyes, and the nose. But you don't start off by seeing those things particularly because the Dalmatian is so wonderfully camouflaged. And so that's the idea that the whole image, the whole object can pop out in terms of consciousness. What do you see now? I think A refers to this, B refers to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the thing. Yeah, what what be a bit quiet now? It's three of those pictures on a, on a stupid television video game that had an argument instead of swallowing each other. So how many people think that it's an S? Somebody did. Somebody said it. Mm -hmm. How many people think that it's a rectangle in front of something? How about a rectangle in front of an S? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I'm going to look at my cheap sheet, so I'm going to snake around the hole. Yeah, I'm going to snake around the hole. I'm going to snake around the hole. Good, 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 good. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Good. Um, <clears throat> so, what I wanted to say about all of this is if this rarefication is a, it's a process of organizing. And when you have an 
organization sort of simpler to uh, bear in mind what it is. And it's easier to think of this as a triangle with three circles behind it. It's easier to think of that as the Loch Ness Monster and for this as a three-dimensional sea mine. Because remembering all these little bits by themselves is a lot more work. So there's this process of organizing, simplifying, and making sense, if you like. So the Loch Ness Monster is different from the other one. Uh, it's different. Well, a bit of a triangle. You, you actually see that what I'm doing is the size of the triangle. Yes. With, and the, with the mine and the steel, I mean, you sort of see the steel. Your, 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 brain, your brain adds the, the lines that aren't there. But the Loch Ness Monster is, that's just something coming out of the but you saw some water. <laughs> well, no, I'm trying to rationalize it to communicate. So, you, so I'm not seeing the rest, I'm not, like the others, I'm not seeing the, the loops and the water, mm. whereas with the others I'm actually mm. joining the lines. <laughs> mm. But of course, the, 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 the urge mm. to make sense of it so strong and form the image in your mind and in some way it prevents you from looking at it objectively. There's a collection of triangles, for example, for sea. I think one of the problems with this is we're, we're actually recognising it as the classic image of the Lord yes. Jesus Minister. That's another but problem. Then, and that also gets in the way of yeah. something else. So, so that, sort of, that now fails. Maybe a long time ago, or uh, they, they haven't seen those pictures, or maybe uh, stout psychologists weren't really familiar with the Loch Ness Monster. Mm. <laughs> 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 Let's move on. Okay, what do you see now? <laughs> What's it do? What do you see? Yeah, and what about the far side there? So I think I think what we can what we can see is that there are different ways and different ways of perceiving this. There are different ways of making sense of it, make compete. And what the brain is doing is it's trying to select that no one wins out. Now, if there was a little bit of perspective on it. As it stands at the moment, it is very carefully balanced. Two, two, previous, two competing readings of it, if you like, are um, called conscious perceptions, are um, so well balanced, no one wins. And so there's an issue of selection. Selecting My comment. Regarding the picture of you, I noticed that actually when I was a child, a bit, there is nothing more equal to me. There are two different versions of the IQ. They are equal. Yes. Well, they equal in the sense that the, 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 the IQ is the same as I is. Now, interestingly, I need to make great effort to see the one where uh, the cube is seen from uh, from below. The reason is that, that I am systematically draw a cube on the blackboard in my lecture to teachers. This is, this is a Cartesian coordinate system. And so it's, it's so now it, uh, imprinted in my brain that this is supposed to one particular picture. I'm going to add something here. I'm going to add knowledge. Because I, I wasn't going to talk about 
this, but it's a great theme for image processing. This is what we're getting prior knowledge. It's a sort of, this isn't part necessarily of just out psychology, but let's keep going. Ooh. Oh, and then four was invariance. I can actually say something about this. Um, but first of all, I've got to ask you what you can see. Widgets. Mm. Yeah, but they're the same in A, but they're not the same in B. So, by which I mean, they, they could be different views of the same object. I think that initially with A, you're going to try and get too clever about it. If you don't look too closely, you think, oh, they're all, they're all similar. Yeah. And I think that part of the organisation is to simplify. And similarity is something that's going to come up. Uh, but you've got when I first glanced at this, I think, oh, they're all the same. And I look closely and see you know, there are differences, there are variations. Um, but what we do is, you're all quite happy to, to sort of talk about whether this is the same as, as this. Meaning, if it had just been a different view of the same thing, you'd see it as the same thing. And so it's the same object even if the view changes. And what you're arguing about is whether or not it's the, it is the same object. It is a view of the same object or a view of a different object. You're not saying, is it the same? Does it look the same, even though it is the same? Okay. Now we move on. So these are sort of four general things, and there's uh, something I'm going to call grouping principles. Um, so, of the closure, what can you see there? If you blotted one out or even more, I could put it back. Well, I suppose you could they're all the same category of circles, and some are right and some are not. Well, 